Yo guys, uh, what's going on? Welcome back to another preview of course, Borough Sheffield United. The night kick off tomorrow night, Bramall Lane. Jeez, this is going to be a tough game. Um, like I said before, going to the West Brom one, I said, you know, we've got West Brom, Leeds, Sheffield United. Three tough games. Each and every team that we obviously played up to now, in them three games, we've been in and around the playoff picture. Of course, Leeds are now in the uh, top two. Sheffield United, what have we learned from them? Um, consistency this season, let's be real. Do you know what I mean? They've been inside the top two as well. I think they've been top of the league at one point. Uh, and now they are third inside the uh, championship. And to be fair to them, they've shocked me now since they came from League One. I think the first season they came up in and outside the playoff picture and then they tried to drop away. But now they're back in there again. And to be fair to them, they're not, they're not so much... Lacking consistency, do you know what I mean? They are in around that playoff picture. It looks like they do want to get promoted this year. Um, and like I say, at the minute they are third, a win could obviously take them second, depending on how Leeds get on uh, against Swansea on Wednesday. But overall, oh, it's going to be a tough game, do you know what I mean? Really, I'm expecting a tough game. It's a hard place to go with Sheffield United. And obviously, last season, they just got into my seat, and I think it took about 45 seconds. And the cross came in, went to the, to the box, and the Sheffield United player hit it straight to the top bin. The scored for corner a few moments later. We had a man sent off on the 45th minute, being Grand Ledbetter, who's now at Sunderland. And then I think Ayala scored a header in front of us. We had a little bit back into the game, but to be realistic, I mean, we were 2-1 two, two, down, 10 men, the game had gone. It was one of them whereabouts, to be fair, they kept on the ball whenever they had it, and they played pretty good against us. At home, we beat them twice. Last season, we beat them 1-0. This season... One of the best first half I've seen for a while, apart from the Leeds game. About everything we touched on went in the back of the net. Martin Braithwaite got a goal. Aidan Flint got his goal. And Stewie Downing got one as well. Beat him 3 0. It was 3 0 within the first 30 minutes or something like that. And like I say, man, Butter absolutely destroyed him first half. Second half, they came to their own. But, you know, Butter came out 3 0 winners. Is, it, is that going to happen tomorrow night? I hope so. I would hope that we go there and win 3 0. But realistically, it ain't going to be as easy as that. Um. And like I say, Scott Brixton will be given at the end of the video. Chris Wilder, Sheffield United manager, Sheffield man as well. Uh, I don't know if he supports Sheffield United, I know he's from Sheffield, but I don't know who he supports. But like I say, Chris Wilder, he's got his play in, fantastic football this season. The third, consistent, losing one of the last five, uh, winning two and drawing two, obviously beating QPR at home 1 0, beating Bowling at home 2 0. Drawing to Aston Villa 3 0, and that game was a bit mad, let's be honest. I mean, Sheffield United fans will probably be a bit uh, angry. Um, you would say to obviously be freeing that up 10 minutes to go and to obviously draw the game for they all Billy Sharp went off and it all sort of fell to pieces for them and to be fair Billy Sharp this season 23 goals like can we just take a moment to just understand that in all competitions this guy's got 23 goals to his name he's been in the championship pretty much all his career with all due respect to him Billy Sharp is a proven championship player and that's a plus side for Sheffield United not to get out of this league you need players that are played inside the championship, know all about it. And Billy Sharp, 23 goals. Well, I think he knows all about it. And I think he knows all about sort of defences in this league and what about the goalies. Um, to finish off, on obviously, on their form, drew to Norwich away 2-2 and lost to Swansea 1-0. Now, the team that lost to Swansea, I watched that game. Sheffield United had so many chances to even get back in that game. Didn't take them. And on that particular night, they probably went home thinking, Do you know what, we could have came away. 2-1, 3-1 winners, but of course, you know what I mean, they didn't take the chances, especially in the first half. I think they had one clear off the line, I think McGoldrick had a header, that went wide, and then he, you know, obviously against Aston Villa, 3 all against one of them, we're about, you could say, as soon as Billy Sharp went off, fell to pieces, but at the same time, did they stop concentrating? It's one of them, and obviously Norwich are way 2-2, let's be real, the way that they're playing the football at the minute, top of the league, you probably would have took a point, you know what I mean, being a Sheffield United fan, you probably would have took a point at that stage, let's be real. Um, and obviously, you know, they are third, 55 points, a win takes them second, so far this season, they've won, uh, actually won 16, drawn 7, lost 8, and Borough fifth, and a win for us could take us fourth, and like I say, you know, we're not many points off, well, in fact, all we are now is four points, off Sheffield United in third, winning 13, drawing 12, and losing 5, not bad at all, ideally, Borough fans, how would you like our season to finish, and Sheffield United fans, how do you see Borough season finishing, do you see us Going to automatic spot, or do you see us going to playoffs, or do you not even see us going to the playoffs? Let me know down below. I said top goal scorers for uh, obviously Sheffield United, Billy Sharp, as I've already said, 23 goals, 2 assists, McGoldrick, 11 goals, 3 assists, and obviously Duffy, 
four goals, four assists. In terms of the butter, well, the only guy in double figures is a guy that doesn't really start, but he does come on and sometimes make an impact. Britt Asom Balonga, 11 goals. Jordan Ugill, 7 goals and 2 assists. And uh, Ashley Fletcher, who again doesn't really get a look in. He's our third highest goal scorer. 4 goals and 1 assist. And of course, last time we played these guys, we did do them 3 0. Now, my starting 11, I believe we have to go 2 up front to 4 1 3 2. I think we have to go attacking against anyone away from home this season. If you want us to go up, if we want to go up, you know what I mean? We have to go attacking. They like Sheffield United of a third. And we've seen that at their place, they just come at you. It's relentless. They don't give you any sort of time to ball. They don't give you a minute's piece. They're constantly in back line. They constantly want to try and score goals past you as a team at home would. And like I say, from the off, they are very much attacking. I think two up front's got to, got to be the way forward. It has to be. So go for me as always. Uh, Randolph, the back four is Ryan Shotton, Flint, Ayala and Friend. Now the one in front of them would be Mikel and the three in front of him and have Johnny Housen, uh, Lewis Wing and George Savile and then two up front. It's got to be Jordan Hugo, Brits and Belonga. Thoughts on that lineup? Let me know. If I was a manager, that's the formation I would play. It's got to be two up front with the sort of attacking threat of Lewis Wing who is always also creative. And of course, House and Savile either side can just bust down the wings and try and do whatever they can try and do. As we all know, when Wing, House and Savile play across that sort of midfield, they are good. Do you know what I mean? They are good together. They just sprint down at the wings. They try and cut inside. They try and do all sorts. And that's what we need. We need that creative spark inside that midfield. And when them three are on the pitch, you can see it. Lewis Wing, will he start? Will he not? We know he went off injured against Leeds. I'm praying and praying and praying the guy is okay to play. Is a massive part of our team. We all know this. To think he was playing non-league football two seasons ago, so now playing in the side of the championship and one sort of division away from the top league is absolutely incredible. His story, and I say, it'd be even more incredible if Borough can beat Sheffield United on Wednesday. My prediction is going to be Borough two, Sheffield United one. I know they can score goals at home. I know they're strong at home. But like I say, man, we have to go there. Borough have to give it a go. I don't get how we win as long as we get the three points. Apparently their goalkeeper isn't the best, that's what I've heard. But, I, well, I say, man, it must be half decent, you know what I mean, if they are third. It must be able to get them some points this season. But, from what I'm hearing is, that isn't exactly spectacular. So, if that's anything to go off, then Butter take it into your stride and try and use it. 2-1 Butter, hoping to see a decent result. I think we're taking just over 750 uh, Butter fans down there. I know we've got allocated 1,500, I think. It might be more, might be less, but as far as I know, I got told on the weekend it was 750 that Borough were taking down Sheffield United. Decent travelling. It would have been nice to have that one sold out. We've only been a couple of hours away. But you know what? It's decent travelling from the Borough Fair for once again. And like I say, you know, we're back on the road on Sunday against Blackburn, but for right now, we have to concentrate. Sheffield United away. Let's see what happens. As always, like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys again soon for the Match Day vlog, which will be out tomorrow night when I get back from Sheffield United. Until then, take care and peace.